there's obviously the issue of uh, now that especially with the feminist movement uh, bigger than what it ever was uh, does the bible treat ma uh, women as inferior to men um, you, especially with uh, reading some passages in the old testament and even in the new testament it seems as though man has been uh, made superior and uh, uh, so what's your response to that when we look at the old testament laws for example uh, it's important to distinguish between certain laws that are given keep in mind jesus said in matthew 19:6 he said that moses permitted certain things inferior things because of the hardness of human hearts not because these were ideal but rather because of the situation on the ground god you know you know god worked with where the israelites were and met them in a sense halfway or part way uh to give them a you know to move them in a redemptive direction but keep in mind the vision there's a difference between laws which aren't always ideal and the broader vision of both the old and new testaments so you look at the old testament where do we begin male and female made in the image of god intrinsic dignity and worth you look at the the big commandments the 10 commandments honor your father not in a piece of furniture honor your father and your mother uh that they are both worthy of honor and respect uh, and so some i've heard some you know liberal theologians talk about oh look at the 10th commandment don't covet your your neighbor's donkey don't covet your neighbor's wife ah she's a piece of furniture just like the donkey no just read a few verses earlier honor your father and your mother so again it's it's just a false uh dichotomy uh we see women who are rising up in ancient israel as leaders you look at deborah uh you look at uh, huldah the prophetess you look at uh you you look at uh even some bad people uh who are you know who are uh you know queens in israel and so forth uh so so there are you know plenty of people who are uh you know women you think of even proverbs 31 the the woman of distinction the woman of virtue the strong woman well what is she doing well she's she's not only taking care of her family supplying for the family she is engaged in real estate uh she's assessing a field and buying it she's engaged in commerce she's doing you know, she's uh, she's a merchant uh selling things buying things uh, so she's someone who is very capable and acting quite independently of her husband who is in the city gates he trusts her she but she's got her own uh work going on so you see someone who is uh, you know so women are seen as important within ancient israel in fact in this next in this forthcoming book is god of vindictive bully i talk about a number of these things related to women that women had their own professions they had their own guilds they were involved in a number of things that you know they're the experts on and uh, and so they had their own realms of expertise <clears throat> and professions and that these were complementary to what men were doing yes men were typically the buffer of uh, the legal buffer between the household and the uh and the surrounding society but it didn't mean that you didn't have strong women who could rise up in leadership uh and there was nothing pro inherently problematic with that uh, we get to the new testament we see people who are involved in leadership in the uh in the uh in the early church uh we see that phoebe is a deaconess we see junia it's a female name uh she was called an apostle she's known among the apostles uh that you have all these you read roman 16 and you see that uh, there are these women who are engaged as paul's fellow workers uh they are you know they are fellow servants with the apostle paul in his ministry we see women who are supporting jesus out of their means in luke chapter 8 we come to galatians 3:28 to which you alluded regarding servitude and he says in christ there is no male and female but all are one in Christ. So this is the bigger vision uh that you have going on. Uh you see women rising in leadership. Uh the apostle Paul recognizes that there are certain uh distinctions within the Mediterranean world and he works with them, but he's acting very subversively. 
uh, in that there is a fundamental equality in the church and this is where it all begins. Uh, it's sort of like the worm getting into the wood and beginning to undermine or act subversively uh, and go running contrary to the entire Roman Empire. So Paul, for example, gives women autonomy that women become converts and they have pagan husbands. And typically the, the understanding was that you followed the, uh, the, the, the God of the, of, that, the, that the father of the household worshipped. But Paul is making a distinction that those who are believers ought not to submit to that that uh, that um, you know that the, that male uh, dom you know, dominance, as it were. Uh, but they were to worship the one true God through Jesus Christ. Uh, that uh, also at the Lord's Supper, you you have man you know you have those who are slaves and and free, those who are masters, servants, and so forth sitting together at the same table, sharing the Lord's Supper. It's a picture of family belonging. Uh, and also in Romans 16, 16 and, and beyond, you have people who are, you know, to, they're commanded to greet one another with a holy kiss. Again, it's a picture of family intimacy, male, female, uh, slave, free. Uh, this is a picture of intimacy. In fact, we even read in, in Romans 16, there are two uh, slaves who are mentioned, Urbanus and Andronicus. Were, those were common slave names in the Roman world. And yet here they are, part of this larger church. Uh, they're mm -hmm. part of this, their fellow servants with Paul. They are partaking in the Lord's Supper. They're commanded to greet one another with a holy kiss. So there's a sense of family belonging. So you see the New Testament is fundamentally undermining the Roman social structure by saying that these differences are fundamentally irrelevant. Do you feel unequipped to talk to your friends about Jesus? Do you want to know more about God and His Word? Are you struggling to kill sin? And do you want to pursue holiness in your life? Then this channel is for you. 